This is the tale of a family destroyed and a family rebuilt. It's a tale of those who live at the bottom of the heap, who little control their life yet still grasp for joy. It's a tale of exile and it's a tale of migration. How history is shaped by the crossing of oceans by desperate people. Walk around, walk around, boys and roll down. We're here creating a new version of a legendary show, The Transports by Peter Bellamy. It's a series of folk ballads which together tell a single story, a true story, of poor young British people exiled to Australia in the 1780s. Uh, I'm particularly excited about uh, this production of The Transports because of the way we're sort of reinventing it for a modern audience and to tie in and resonate with contemporary concerns, particularly about migration. Well, The Transports was, was written in 1977, as I said, by Peter Bellamy, and, and the first performance and the first recording was like an all-star cast of, of the English folks in the Watersons, Martin Carthy, Bert Lloyd, just Nick Jones, just uh, idols for people like us who, who spend our life listening to folk music. So to be involved with it is just absolutely incredible. Bellamy to have used the language, this democratic expressive language of traditional music and song, to tell and carry these pieces of working class history, these people's stories, um, is tremendously significant. I think it's one of the reasons that it's lasted so long, this repertoire. And it really tells us something about ourselves. It really marks our British footprint through history and tells us where we've been and what we've done. I've been working with the transports on and off for a few years. I did a production about four years ago, and one of the things that's always struck me is that the production as it was is open to reinterpretation that it can be added to without detracting from the original values of the transports. So for this production, we've added narration, uh, spoken narration rather than sung narration, which has enabled Matthew, the writer, to flesh out the story, to put it in both a historical and a contemporary context. There's an incredible true story behind the transports. And I wanted the opportunity to bring out that story fully. And the best way to do that was to provide some storytelling and some narrative structure running between the songs. The songs are still intact, the songs are still beautiful, but this way we can set up the songs with me telling stories and also providing some historical context to put them in their place. I think for Bellamy to have set uh, these working class histories, which is what they are, these stories of real people, to um, the sort of you know, beautifully expressive, democratic language that is traditional song and music. Um, that's why it has the staying power, that's why these uh, pieces, that's why this ballad opera has survived. We've also set up a project called Parallel Lives. For each venue in each town that we visit on this tour, we've gathered stories of people, migrants, who left Britain two centuries ago. And we're setting them alongside stories of migrants and refugees who've come to live in the same town in the last few years. And we're inviting to each venue a local partner organization, a refugee or migrant support group, as part of the Parallel Lives Project. Walk around, make 